This video is about crossover, which in evolutionary computation is the combining of multiple candidate solutions to get new solutions. Now, typically we combine two solutions and also get two solutions out of it. But you can combine two solutions into one solution or combine more than two solutions into any number of solutions and we would still call that process crossover. Now, the form of crossover used in the earliest genetic algorithms is modeled on chromosomes. This is also the origin of the name crossover. Now, chromosomes in living organisms will cross like so. So these two chromosomes represent um, sequences of genes from different parents. They cross inside the cell and then at this point a split occurs so that two new chromosomes are made. The newly made chromosomes carry a portion of DNA from one parent and a portion of DNA from the other parent. Now, the position where the split occurs can be anywhere on the chromosome. So there is not always an even split of mother-father DNA. In genetic algorithms, this process is abstracted in the following way. Consider two bit strings, A and B, that look like the following. Note that each of these bit strings are the same length. Now, what's happened in this biological example is single point crossover. We can do the same with these bit strings by randomly choosing a position to split the genomes, and then we can create two children genomes as follows. Child one will have all of the genes, or bits, of parent A at the beginning, and then bits from parent B after that point. First we take the bits from parent A. 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. And then from here on we take bits from parent B. 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. We can also create a second child that gets its initial bits from parent B and the remaining bits from parent A. So its bits would be 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, and then 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. So from these two parents, we get two children. Now, strictly speaking, we don't have to keep both. We could just choose to discard one of these. But if we want, we can fill our new population with children from these parents, and we can choose to keep both if we'd like. This general approach applies for any linear representation. This means that this type of crossover can be used for any genome representation that is a list or array. I used bits in this example, but this form of crossover works equally well for arrays of floating point numbers, which, as we know from the previous video, are another common representation. However, there's no reason to restrict ourselves to what occurs in biology. We can do other types of crossover. Instead of simply crossing over at one randomly chosen point, we can do uniform crossover. In uniform crossover, there is a random chance that any bit can come from either parent. Essentially, we do a coin flip for each position in the genome to decide which parent the gene comes from. So we could create a child like so. Still using these same two parents, I will flip a coin for each position. And so let's say that first I get parent A. That means that a zero is in this position. 
Then I get parent B. That means there's a one here in this position. Then I get B again, then I get A, then I get A again, then A again, then B, then B, then B, then B, then A, then B, then A. And as you see, we get a new child. We can also have multiple parents if we'd like. This could be done by having three parent genomes. And then instead of flipping a coin, we pick a random number from one to three. And that indicates which parent each new gene comes from. In fact, there are other even more eclectic ways of performing crossover, some of which we'll see when we talk about more interesting genome representations in a later video.